I am Mary Lloyd Ireland, an orthopedic surgeon. We had our first board meeting of the Active Women's Health Initiative on April the 20th, and these were some of the ideas for this initiative that we talked about at that board meeting, roundtable research and education projects, what things are possible and what are we going to start working on. Research categories, specific sports, softball and cheerleading. Softball is becoming the new Little League Baseball with a lot of showcases year-round girls playing softball. We need information on epidemiology, injury patterns, and what we can do to make it a healthier sport. Cheerleading is the most demanding sport that young girls do. We see a lot of injuries in cheerleading. And when I ask patients who were cheerleaders come to see me as young adults in their 20s and 30s, most say they would not want to do cheerleading again and would not sacrifice their bodies in the way that they did because they end up with chronic pain, back injuries. And looking back, they would not cheer at that highly competitive level. If that's the case, we need to modify some of the cheerleading activities and demands that are placed on these young female athletes. Concussion, certain sports such as women's basketball and soccer, female athletes are more likely to have concussions in epidemiologic studies by the NCAA. Physical activity, how can we increase that and make it a lifetime of physical activity? After ACL reconstructions, 50% of patients develop osteoarthritis. We're looking at developing a registry and following collegiate athletes after they've had ACL reconstructions, and we're talking 10 years, 20-year follow-up. Nutrition, eating disorders, much more common in the female athlete, particularly in those sports such as cheerleading, gymnastics. And an awareness of the Me Too movement with diagnosing eating disorders, with diagnosing abuse. As you watch these sports on split screen, figure skating on the left and wrestling, professional wrestling on the right, much different patterns of landing and also much different level of testosterone estrogen. So sports are different comparing males and females. Girls are playing softball year round and we're seeing more injuries in softball. We've seen a significant increase in Little League baseball injuries to the elbow and to the shoulder, overhead throwing in girls, and underhand pitching in softball. We're seeing more injuries, and we need to track these injuries and hopefully put some prevention programs in place to protect particularly the arm of our young female softball athletes. Several organizations came together, spearheaded by Dr. Andrews when he was president of AOSSM, the American Orthopedic Sports Medicine Society, called STOP, and this is Sports Trauma and Overuse Prevention. It used to be when we climbed trees, we'd break an arm when we fell out, and that was macro trauma. These microtraumatic injuries are very significant and include elbow injuries in Little League Baseball, shoulder injuries. So this is a site that actually the athletes, young athletes, as well as the parents can go to with 16 different sports talking about injury patterns and how to prevent this overuse injury from occurring. And a lot of it is taking some time off and not doing a sport 12 months out of the year. It's a good site to go to and refer our young athletes to that. So sports should continue, but there is definitely a need to look at sports and prevent overuse injuries. Cheerleading is one of those sports that are on this site. Concussion is more common in collegiate basketball and soccer athletes. So we think about this in the NFL and football. 
but certainly we need to do more research on concussion and making sure athletes should be going back at a proper time. The Sports Medicine Research Institute is cutting edge with research on concussed athletes, and this is how a concussion occurs. I can take the pain and I can take the hurt, you know, because I'm so competitive and I, I, don't, I wouldn't care. You know, I would tear my ACL, you know, just to win a national championship. That's all I want. So females want to compete like males do, and we need to take care of them in a similar way. It doesn't matter what sex they are. They want to return to full activities and will sacrifice their knees and other potential injuries to compete and to win. That University of Tennessee athlete underwent an ACL reconstruction and this is how we do it. We can stabilize the knee. Uh, this is a bone patellar tendon autograft, but we really can't restore it to pre-injury state. So follow up with x-rays and seeing how these individuals are doing 10 and 20 years after their ACL reconstruction. 15-year-old females are the most common ACL injury and reconstruction that are done by orthopedists. So we have a 15-year-old with a potential arthritic knee in 10 years. So we need to rethink biology and timing of return to play. Should these individuals go back to their high-risk sports, we need to follow them and develop a registry, and this is one of the charges of the Active Women's Health Initiative reestablishing this normal mosaic of the knee can be very difficult and it could be more genetics, more range of motion, a lot of variable factors with how individuals do after an ACL reconstruction. But the post-reconstructed ACL is not a normal knee, it may be a stable knee. This is a 36-year-old professional basketball athlete. I had seen her for patellofemoral arthritis she didn't injure that knee playing professional basketball. She injured her other knee. So on the right, you can see where there's a little narrowing of her kneecap in the lower right. So I had seen her previously for anterior knee pain, and then she blew out her opposite knee. And when you look at these x-rays at the time she, just before her surgery, her weight-bearing x-rays on the top, the joint spaces look good. There's no evidence of any arthritis on the knee that she just tore her ACL. But look at what happens in follow-up. So this is two years after her reconstruction. We might criticize the way the graft was placed. I did not do her surgery. But look at her significant tricompartment osteoarthritis now. It's two years after her reconstruction. She's stiff and sore. This is almost four years after her reconstruction, so her arthritis is progressed and she's only 40 years old. So what about a concept of pack years of knee, as in pack years of smoking? These individuals play basketball a lot, so pack years of smoking on the lungs we know is not good. Should we have a pack years of activity on the knees and maybe too, year, too many pack years of basketball made this individual develop arthritis after her ACL reconstruction? Project Increase Awareness and Report, Eating Disorders, Verbal Abuse, Sexual Abuse. One of the early projects with the James E. Ireland Foundation was a DVD on eating disorders, more common than you think. We had local high school Lafayette actors and actresses act out eating disorders, and this was, I think, a valuable contribution to the um, awareness and education of coaches. This is available online through the James E. Ireland Foundation. You can view this and use this. We hope to do more service-oriented education projects with the Active Women's Health Initiative. Body image is important to all ages. Thin is still in. Young females are doing anabolic steroids to look cut. We need to have an awareness with these young athletes and active athletes. This is a gymnast who tried out for the Olympics and overheard a coach and a judge say that she was too fat. 
She died of an eating disorder. Her parents were not even aware that she had this problem. Early recognition of eating disorders is very important before these young individuals even graduate from high school. If they get into college and into more adulthood, eating disorders are not treatable nor curable, and it is a life-threatening problem. This is a good textbook, Little Girls in Pretty Boxes by Joan Ryan. She was a reporter, San Francisco Chronicle, who was doing a story, and she got so interested in these elite gymnasts and figure skaters that she wrote a book about it. I think this is a good reference for athletes, parents, and coaches of these elite little girls, gymnasts, and figure skaters, and cheerleaders to read as a reference. Very eye-opening. As this says, John Feinstein, stunning and frightening, this is the book that must be read by anyone considering a career in either sport. I was involved with the U.S. women's and men's gymnastics teams in 1992. Some of these individuals had been abused. I had no idea about any of this, and no gymnast ever spoke to me directly about any problems with the physicians. Larry Nasser has just been convicted of numerous sexual abuse, assault with these gymnasts. We as healthcare providers, parents, involved individuals must pay attention and report any abuse, whether it's eating disorders, whether it's verbal abuse, sexual abuse. It is child abuse and must be reported, not ignored. We all must serve and protect our athletes from abuse, whether it's female athlete triad. The hashtag Me Too, I think, is very important. Larry Nasser is convicted of over 150 sexual abuses in women and girls. He was allowed to get away with a lot, and we need to appreciate and report anything that young athletes tell us. I published The Female Athlete with Aurelia Native, who is a family practitioner at UCLA. This was published in 2003, hopefully with support of the Active Women's Health Initiative and colleagues, we can update this. This is a resource for primary care physicians, gynecologists, and others to know the uniqueness of some of the sports with females and also specific injury patterns with emphasis on different joints and female athletes and active women. Similarities in the sports arena and life, certainly with competition, caring, attitude, courage, success. I think being an athlete has allowed me to be a more productive adult and a successful orthopedic surgeon in a male-dominated profession, orthopedic surgery and sports medicine. The Ireland Foundation, what if? What if I never swam, played field hockey and basketball? What if I never climbed trees and ran? You can see in the upper right, I was a bit competitive and started winning in swimming, and that really helped me compete in the arena of my profession and life. This is me playing in the dirt. That's a hula hoop, a swing set. Let's allow young girls to get out and play outside, learn about nature, and not be hooked on their devices. Thank you very much. Let's keep this round table going. Water buck in Africa. I am Mary Lloyd Ireland, an orthopedic surgeon. We had our first board meeting of the Active Women's Health Initiative on April the 20th, and these were some of the ideas for this initiative that we talked about at that board meeting, roundtable research and education projects. 
what things are possible and what are we going to start working on.